The timing case holds the timing gears. Hey YouTube, what's going on? I'm Greg, welcome back to my machine shop. Well, we completed the block for our Wallaby 30cc engine. Today we're gonna tackle a brand new assembly, the timing case assembly. If you're enjoying these videos as much as I am making them, I encourage you to click the subscribe and the notification bell. First, let's look at the engine itself and try to locate the timing case. Then we'll look at the 3D model and, and see how it works and how it fits into the engine. All right, so the timing case mounts right to the front of the engine, right here. It's a little hard to see the timing case behind the distributor and exhaust pipe, but it's this guy right here. Let's take a look at the 3D model. I think it'd be easier to see. Here's our engine mounted on our base. Let's take a close-up look of the timing case that we're going to be working on. This is the distributor. This is the oil pump. And this is our starter dog. Let me hide those so we can get a better view of our timing case. Here's a close-up of what's inside the timing case. The crankshaft is connected to a crankshaft pinion, which turns an idler gear, which turns the camshaft spur gear. The crankshaft pinion gear also turns a large spur gear connected to the oil pump. Let's take a closer look at the timing case assembly. So here I've isolated the timing case assembly. Let's look at an exploded view and we can get a better sense of the parts we're going to be making. We're going to be focusing on the front plate, the rear plate, and the body. The gears we're going to save for a later project. Taking a closer look at the timing case front plate, we notice that there's a lot of holes here. There's five holes here that are threaded that the oil pump is attached to. And then there's some holes around the perimeter that hold the case together. There's a couple of threaded holes here that hold the distributor on. And then if we flip it over, there's a couple of areas with bearing seats where two ball bearings sit into for shafts. Let's take a look at the print and come up with our strategies. If you're building your own Wallaby, you'll need to download the plans. They're available from my website and I've put a link below. Open up the zip and you'll find a series of PDF files. This one here is the main assembly, the timing case. There's a couple of drawings for the rear plate and the front plate. And then there's a couple of shafts in here and then the body itself. The IGIS files are used in our CAM program, I'm using Fusion 360. The body timing case.stl file is used to 3D print the timing case body. This drill guide can be 3D printed and used to ease the drilling of the holes if we're doing it manually. And finally, our version.txt file, which holds the information of the versions of all the documents. All right, let's take a look at the timing case assembly drawing. This is our timing case assembly drawing. First page is our exploded view with all the parts labeled. Second page has our bills of material. The, there's a few parts that we need to buy. These stainless steel screws and there's four of these R188ZZ bearings. These can be obtained on Amazon if you're in the States. And next we have the drawing of the plates themselves. The thing to notice about the drawings for the plates is there are three pages, two for the rear and one for the front. Page two of the rear plate has all of the dimensions of the holes. And these dimensions are not repeated on the front plate. There's a note here that says to use the same dimensions except for those noted on this particular print. Now we're gonna look at four different ways to make this part out of a plate of eighth inch aluminum. The first way is the simplest and my least preferred. You cut out a pattern, you gotta make sure it's one to one. To do that, you have to identify some critical dimensions. The most important are the distances between these large holes as they define where the gears sit. You need to ensure that your print is exactly, matches exactly the dimensions. Okay. You don't want to get all done with your part and find out you're 95% too small. So the first method we're going to talk about is the simplest and my least preferred. Take your pattern 
and a little bit of white glue and just glue it right onto your plate. Then take a scribe and ever so carefully mark the center of each of the holes. Once you've done that, take your center punch, put it in there and punch that hole. And then take some die kim or a Sharpie marker and mark the outline all the way around. And then you'll take this over to your drill press or mill and drill out these holes. The reason I don't particularly like that method is that, again, these holes distances are very important and it's hard to get this hole exactly where it needs to be. So method number two is to use the, the mill and load this into the vise. What I would do, since there's two of them, a front and a back, I would take two of them and clamp them together, uh, maybe even a little bit of super glue between the two, and then clean the two edges so you got two parallel surfaces for your vise. Clamp that in your vise. Then, then what I would do is I would lay your pattern on here, establish the zero, zero point, and then spot drill all of these holes and drill the common holes all the way through. You need to be careful of two things. One, there are some holes that are different. This hole is smaller in the rear pit plate because it's threaded. And there's some additional holes on the front that are 440 threaded that do not appear on the rear. And then of course, these all have a little bit different configuration because of the way the bearings sit. The third way is to use this drill guide that I've supplied. Print it on your 3D printer overlay it onto your plate. There are four holes here, 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 and here that are alignment holes. Take an eighth inch drill, drill all the way through these four, and use four pins to hold this into place or clamp it securely. And then take a spot drill and spot drill through every single one of these other holes here. By doing so, you've now marked all of the holes onto this plate and you can come back and use your pattern and then line up with those holes and then make the outline, drill those holes and then cut the outline out on a bandsaw and then clean it up on your disc sander. Our fourth way is to use our CNC router. I'm going to make a separate video on how to use Fusion 360 to create the toolpaths for these plates. Part 2B covers the Fusion 360 toolpath programming. You can click the upper corner to go to that video. Here I'm setting my X and Y coordinates, the paper pattern. Then I touch off on in the Z axis and then go to all the edges to make sure that the part will end up on my blank. Quarter inch end mill is used to rough out most of the material in the holes. Then the 332nd end mill is used to mill out the 632 holes. And then is used to cut out the outside. There are several roughing passes, 25 thousandths deep. The end mill is running at 9,000 RPM. And now this is a finishing pass. I take two of these around the outside to clean up the edge. Then I make a finishing pass on the holes with the 332 in mill. And she's done. Okay, if you're manual machining these plates, there's these little recesses for the bearings that the bearings gets pressed into. If you're manual machining this, I would use a half inch in mill to create this, follow it up with just a touch, like with a 3 8 in mill, to, so you clear the inner race and create that little step in there. Let's talk about the timing case body for our Wallaby engine. Looking at the drawing, you'll note the timing case body shown in this drawing has the hole locations and outside dimensions identical to the rear plate. What I did was I 3D printed it. The STL file is included with the plans in the zip file. If you want to do the same, that really is the simplest way to do it. However, there are other ways to do it. You could make it out of an aluminum plate. You could take our front plate and use this as a template. Drill all of the outside holes 
using a couple of them to hold it in place, trace the outside, drill the holes, outside holes all the way through, and then use your bandsaw to cut out the outside, and then use your disc sander to smooth it. Cut out the inside, the simplest thing to do is to set your calipers at an eighth of an inch, and then just trace on the outside to the inside, and then cut away the inside. It doesn't need to be pretty, it just needs to clear our gears that will be going in here later. If you don't want to use a piece of aluminum, you could use a piece of acrylic, or even a piece of old cutting board. This one here is about half of an inch thick, that's what we need. If you've got a 3D printer, this is certainly the easiest way to do it. Just use a high temperature plastic like ABS or PET-G. The timing case assembly requires two shafts. These have been cut from a piece of quarter inch stock. One of them is very simple, 0.7, and we'll, put, we'll chamfer the ends. The second shaft is a little bit more complicated. It's still 0.7 inch long, but we drill an eighth inch hole in the end of it to accept a eighth inch shaft that actually drives the, the oil pump gears. So we need to drill this hole. We need to install a flat and a set screw to hold this shaft. And then there is a keyway cut into it. So this can be locked and turned by the oil pump spur gear that's turned by the crank shaft pinion. Let's go to the lathe. I've already faced both ends of the shaft and made them the proper length. I took them in and out of the collet a few times. Now we spot drill for our 1-8 hole. A little bit undersized drill, the number 30 drill. Use plenty of oil. And then finally ream to 0.126 in thousandths oversize. So it'll accept a eighth inch shaft. Then over to the mill, we touch off the Y axis on both sides of the vise, zero it out. Then we touch off at the end of the shaft to zero our X axis. Now I'm running the spindle about as fast as it'll go, and I'm taking seven thousandths deep cuts to get to thirty-five thousandths. And I want to go over and touch off a flat spot for my spot drill. Watch this, watch this end mill dance around here. It's not best practice to use a drill chuck to hold an end mill. I can get away with it here because the side loads are very small with this tiny end mill. If I used a collet chuck, I could probably get better precision in my keyway. And I spot drill. This is a 2 millimeter drill. This will get tapped to 2.5 millimeters. And there's our completed shaft. I press the ball bearings into their seats with the vise. And then assemble it. Ah, she's looking good! Well, we finished the timing case for our wallaby. I'm pretty happy with that. I cut my plates out on the CNC router and 3D printed my body. Let me know in the comments below how you're going to make yours. Next time, we're going to get started on the crankcase and our wallaby will really start to look like an engine. Remember, click subscribe so you can follow along with me. I'm Greg. Thanks for visiting me in my workshop. Until next time, take care.